As you connect with me, and as you yearn for me, and as you seek me, you shall see these other things dwindle away and melt away from your life, my children. Draw upon the love that your Father has, and you will see that that love flows out from you, through you, and you shall be my instruments and my hands and my feet and my voice to the people that you are around my people and you shall be a blessing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Well, see, it's sometimes it's good to come out on a Sunday night. Yes. <laughs> we didn't have all that this morning, did we? Now, we did have a wonderful blessing this morning. Yes. A young lady got saved and there's nothing yes. more wonderful than that. Amen. Amen. So we yes. praise God for that. Amen, amen. Jesus. Everybody rejoices in heaven. Amen. It's the Bible says when one soul comes to the Lord. Hallelujah. So we know there was some rejoicing going on this morning. Praise God. And you know, there's just a lot of churches that never see salvations, you know, for months. Sometimes years. I mean, I've traveled enough, I've been in enough churches to know. You know, and when somebody gets saved, it's almost like a shock <laughs> to the group. Wow. You know, and you think, where is their thought processes? Where is their mind? Where is their spirit? Mm -hmm. Are they really wanting more of God? Right. Or are they just, uh, you know, denying the power of God? You know, what's that scripture says? We something about denying form, the power. They hold a form of the religion. Form of yes. Form of godliness. Form of godliness or of God, and but they deny the power thereof. Well, bless God, if you don't see the power of God, how can you behold the form of God? Right. You know, He is power. He is majesty. He is glory. Yes. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Well, let's pray. We'll get into the Word tonight. Praise God. Sometimes we'll just come together and sing for about 30 minutes and just see what God might do. And we might just have a worship service and a... A, a worship time where we just sing in the spirit for a while. Mm -hmm. If you've never sung in the spirit before for any length of time, oh, it's beyond description Amen. what God will do. Beyond description. When I was in Bible school, that happened fairly regularly. And all the waves of the spirit would just move across the group. Wow. Awesome. And people would get healed. And, yeah. you know, Oppressions would just fall off and people would begin to shout because God, you could just see the Spirit of God move across. And as He did, people would raise their hands and things would happen and people would shout. And you knew God was doing something for those people. Well, He wants that in every church, not just at Raymond. You know, He wants to do that everywhere. You know, we just got to get in a place of worship where He'll do that for us. Praise God. That's my prayer for this group that we'll eventually get to that place. Amen. Yes. You know, and, uh, when somebody comes in, they'll just Ooh. come under such power of the Lord, they'll just run to the altar. Right. Yes. When I was in Kentucky uh, preaching one time, that morning uh, a new family had come into the church, and that morning the mother and three children all got saved. Wow. Well, that's marvelous. Well, the man didn't didn't come. He was gripping the back of the pew. I remember his chairs. He was gripping it so hard that I, I, I swear to you, there was fingerprints left an hour or two later. But he did not come. He was under conviction, but he did not respond. Well, he came back that night because his wife threatened him with a frying pan. And so he came back again that night. So uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the frying pan works wonders, bless God. And uh, when we began to worship God, he just jumped up out of his chair and just ran to, I mean literally ran to the altar. And we had a long church so he had a ways to run. So while he was running, everybody was looking at him thinking, what is he about? We've never seen anybody run in the church like that. But it was the power of God it just got all over him. He ran up to the altar and slid into the altar like he was sliding into home plate after hitting a home run and looked up at me and says, I want to get saved. And I thought, yes, we can do this. Yeah. Amen. Amen? We can do this. 
Praise God. So it's that's exciting when that happens. Oh my! I mean, I, I lived off of that for weeks afterwards, just off of that experience. Bless God. Praise the Lord, Father. We thank you tonight for the engrafted word that finds its way and, and, and connects itself to our spirit. It grows around us and grows through us, just like roots into the ground. It, it entwines itself, the Word entwines itself within our spirits. And because it does, it gives us life. It builds faith in our spirit. Hallelujah. It brings sustenance yes, and power. Yes, yes. And all the things, all the fruit of the Spirit is released into our spirit. So we pray for that Word to do creative work here tonight. Holy Spirit, let the Word be creative here tonight. Move among your people and among those that will hear this message and be creative and move upon them and touch them by the power of God. We pray for a supernatural encounter tonight with the Almighty God. And we thank you for that. We give you praise for it. Thank you for anointing this, your servant, and using me just as a vessel. Shape me and mold me to what you want tonight. Use my mind and my spirit for whatever purpose will glorify you. And we'll give you praise for it. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. The importance of God's love. Everybody knows love is, is one of the big things in the Bible. One of the big three, as they talk about in 1 Corinthians 13. In fact, it finally gets to the bottom of that passage and says, out of everything, love is the foundational principle. It is the thing. Praise so, uh, if we can get the thing, a lot of those other things just kind of fall into place. You see? So, a lot of times... We have become through the preaching and teaching on TV and different places over the years, and I and I'm as guilty as this as anybody, of becoming need conscious. When we need to become love conscious. Okay? Because if we're love conscious, we won't even worry about the need. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Become love conscious. And he says he'll add those things. Amen. Don't be need conscious. Don't think about your need all the time. And I need this and I need that. And go to the Lord with your laundry list of things that you need constantly. You see? Right, right, right. Yeah. Go to the Lord. Just worship the Lord. Extend your love that He has given you back to Him. Worship Him with your love. And, and become love conscious. Thank you, Jesus. Well, it will change your life if you can get there. I'm trying to get there just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Nobody Amen. has arrived. That Amen. I have met so far. Amen. You know, right. But some of us are further down the road than others. Right. But we can all benefit by pressing toward yes. that being love conscious. Amen. You know, letting the love of God rule your life. First Thessalonians chapter 4. I don't know how far we'll get tonight. We're going to make at least two parts out of this, maybe three. And because uh, love is not something that we want to rush or just throw one message at you and say, well, you've got it right. Because uh, there's one message will not suffice. Many messages will not suffice. You can't overdose on love. No, you can't. All right? That's right. You can't overdose on love. You can't get too much of that. No. You can't too hear, hear too many messages on it. Right. If anything, the devil has slyly taken us into where we preach about other things and don't focus. What did Jesus do in Revelations when he rebuked the churches there? Left your first love. See, he, he didn't talk about, hey, you're, you're not coming up to the same level of faith that I wanted you to, or, or this or that or the other. He didn't re, uh, reprimand them on any of those things, but he said, you've lost the first thing that I showed you, that I gave you. <clears throat> and that's my love. That's right. Praise God. So if he counts that that important, that he spoke that to a whole church, well then, maybe we should 
put some importance on it as well. So we're talking yeah, about the importance right. of God's love. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Are you there? I've given you time to get there. We're going to begin with verse 9. But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you. For you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. So who teaches us to love? God. See, it's not something that we have to muster. It's not something that we have to work up. It's not an emotion. Although we talk about love like it's only an emotion. If, if the, we're talking about the love of God tonight. It's not, it's not emotion. Now, it can bring emotions, but it is not an emotion itself. It's far higher than that. It's a spiritual force, if you will. It's the essence of who God is. Yes. yes. Praise God. As we sing about tonight, you know, we'll look at here in a minute. God is love. He has and possesses other characteristics, but He is love. Bless the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. So God teaches us to love one another. <clears throat> Verse 10, And indeed you do toward all the brethren when are in Macedonia, but we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more. So can you increase your love? Yes. Yes. Can love grow? Yes. <clears throat> yes. More and more. Can you cultivate love and plant seeds of love and then have that love multiplied back to you? Amen. Yes. Love is a seed you can plant in other people's life. And as you plant that love seed, it produces and it will multiply back into your life. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let it be, Lord. Verse 11, And that you study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you walk honestly toward them that are without. You know what I see in the body of Christ today that troubles me more than anything else? It's a lying spirit. People don't tell the truth anymore. They tell what's convenient or what they think you want to hear. You know, ladies, don't ask me if you look good if you don't want them to write the answer to come back. Because I will tell you the truth. Now, I'll try to do the best I can to... to rub off the edges, but I will, you know, I will try to, if I can't compliment you on your uh, hair, then I'll try to compliment you on your dress. I'll try to get something in there that's good, that looks good on you that day. But my wife used to ask me, How, do I look good in this? Does this make me look fat? And I thought, what a loaded question. What are you going to say to that? You know? If you oh, say, no. you know, if you say yes, well, you know you're in deep trouble. And if they say no, well, she, oh, you're just saying that. Yeah. So you, you, there's no, that's a no win scenario. You, you know. <clears throat> Bless God. <laughs> that you walk honestly toward them that are without. And that you may like. I like this. That you may have lack of nothing. Amen. Woo! Yeah. That's a powerful Hallelujah. statement. Hallelujah. What gets us there when we have lack of nothing? Love. Love. Amen. I mean, that's what, the, what we've been reading about, right? Amen. Brotherly love. Love that God sheds abroad in our heart. That's what gets us to a place where we lack for nothing. So do we need to focus on our needs if we're walking in love no. on a regular basis? No. We really don't because God says, if you seek my kingdom and my righteousness and walk in my love, hey, I'll just... Make sure that everything you need, you got. That's right. You know, and that's that's old yeah. Southern Missouri uh, interpretation, but that's what he meant. <laughs> Praise God. Right. Yeah. Whatever you think you need, and maybe even a little more, I will give you if you'll do what I ask of you. <clears throat> so don't be need conscious. Mm -hmm. I want to say this a few times, and I'll probably say it again. Be love conscious. Amen. Right. Praise God. Amen. Let's. Uh, Let's go to 1 John chapter 4. So God is love, and we're going to look at that. Mm -hmm. And we just sang about this earlier, so Ken has already sung part of my message tonight. <laughs> so that's good and fine. So we, we, we already know in 1 John chapter 4, turn over to 1 John chapter 4. 
We're going to spend a little time in 1 John. John is called the Apostle of Love. And uh, I don't know if there's a higher level of praise that you can put on somebody. Right. Uh, you know, I'd much rather be called the Apostle of Love than the Apostle of Faith. Amen. Although, faith is good. Mm -hmm. We need faith. Without faith, we can't please God. We all understand those things. But love is the very foundation. Just as we say, faith is the substance of things hoped for, love gives substance to faith. You see? And in 1 Corinthians 13, it says you can move mountains, you can do everything, but if you don't have the substance, it doesn't mean anything to God. He's not impressed by that. Anything you do or say, if it's not motivated by love. Amen. So love is the substance that holds faith up. And we're going to look at that a little in more detail later on this evening. Okay, verse John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So love will help you to do what? Know God. Know God. Know God. We all want to know God. Even Paul said that I might know Him and the power of His resurrection. Amen. Yes. You see, Paul had that same desire to know God. And love is the thing that will bring you into a place where you have revelation knowledge of who God is. Praise, God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. He that loveth not, verse 8, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was... Let's see how far I want to read. Let's go down to verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. See how many times John says this? He just keeps repeating himself. Yeah. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. So if you dwell in love, you're automatically the center of your universe is God, right? Love and God. God is love. Amen. You can't separate the two. Right. If you're walking in love, you're walking with God. Hallelujah. Bless God. That's what the Scripture says. I'm just, you know, enumerating what the, what the passage says. I'm not trying to make it say something it doesn't say. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go to verse 2. 10 in chapter 4. We'll spend, like I say, a little bit of time in this area. Chapter 4, verse 10. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Yes. So He's saying, if God could love you, when you weren't a very lovable person, yeah. <laughs> some of us not nearly as lovable as we should have been, right, right. into things we shouldn't have been into, but yet said God loved us even while we were in the midst of the sin and iniquity, the transgressions, <laughs> He still was extending His love because love never fails. Amen. 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 So what is He going to win you over with? Because why? Because it never, never fails. fails. Amen. Bless God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So if you want to win somebody over that's been a thorn in your flesh, and I've got some of those folks, you probably got some of those folks, somehow you're going to have to muster up some love, and I know it's difficult because some people are, you know, seem like they are a messenger of Satan for sure. Yeah. You know, sent personally by Satan himself. <laughs> to buffet you. Yeah. Uh -huh. One side and then the other. Yeah. Bless God. I don't know how he does that, but he knows what people to pick. Let me tell you. Yeah, he knows the buttons to push. He knows which people are signed up and ready to go for him. Bless God. Amen. But love will conquer that because love never fails. That's right. The love of God never fails. Thank God. Let's look at uh, verse 21. And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. 
I've had people say, well, I love God, but I, I hate this person over here. Uh -huh. I, can't, I can't stand them. I hate the sight of them. I don't want to be around them. But, but I love God now. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a good Christian and I love the Lord. You know? Yeah. Is that is that is that possible? No. no. Some people think it is. No. In fact, a lot of people think it is. They're in denial, then. You know. Sorry. But we'll look a little later on, and we'll see that that's not possible. In fact, hate God equates with murder. That's right. Mm. Yeah. And we'll look at that a little bit later and see how serious mm. hate can be in a person's life. It's the opposite of love. Right. Right. Mm. It's the devil's tool. It's his weapon against humanity. And somehow we've got a... I had a situation where a woman had went to some, another minister and had said some things about me that were totally false. But, you know, the minister didn't know for sure whether they were or were not, you know. So that person, that minister, called me and said, did you know that so-and-so was saying so-and-so? And I said, no. I said, I wonder what would make this person do that. And she says, I don't know the person, the minister I was talking to, but they said it. So a couple of three weeks later, this person called me and crying on the phone and saying, forgive me because I said some things that were not true because I was hurt and I, I was mad and... Uh, I just know that you hate me. You must hate me. And I said, Sister, I don't hate you. I said, I, I can't hate. That's not part of who I am. Anymore. Amen. You know, that, that was my old nature. I, I, I'm, not, it's not, I'm not capable of hating anybody. If anybody can hate, then they're not part of the family of God. Right. It's right. I mean, it's that simple, Amen. folks. We just need to speak straight. If they can hate, they don't know God. They haven't been born again. Their nature has not been changed. And there's scripture to back that up. Plenty of them. Yes. So are you on dangerous thin ice when you're in hatred? You bet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, just as dangerous as you can be, right? Right. Amen. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. I've had all kinds of people tell all kinds of things when I was in Kentucky. There was this person who uh, I didn't know, but she was into the occult. <clears throat> and she was coming to our church. Now, she acted fairly normal in church. Brought her husband and her kids, you know. But then I went out to see her one time at her home, and uh, we got to talking, and she's. I don't know how we even got on the topic, but we were talking about hearing the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Oh, she says, I have many voices that speak to me. Mm -hmm. and of course, my antenna went up when I heard that, <laughs> you know. Yeah. She says, yeah, they speak to me out of my kitchen cabinet. Oh, my God. You know, <laughs> what are you going to say to that? You were just going out for a friendly visit. And all of a sudden, you're in the middle of all this. And you're saying, God, what have you brought me into? I haven't been praying real good today. I'm not even ready for this. I thought we were just going to shake hands and have a peanut butter sandwich. I mean, really. You know. Wow. So when I told her that there was a problem... With that, well, she got just yeah. real upset. <laughs> and then she, she made it her personal mission in life to destroy mine. Oh. Destroy my minister, ministry, to destroy me personally. Oh. Went and told lies to all the other pastors in town about me. Went to every pastor nice. in the community. Oh. And pastors were calling me and saying, what's going on over there? We had such a good reputation before then. You know, it's easy to lose a good reputation. You lose it just in a snap of a finger. Right, right. Uh, and I said, well, I said, brother, I said, this woman is just, uh, how can I say it? She's oppressed of the devil. Mm -hmm. Maybe possessed by the devil. I really don't know, but she's hearing voices out of the cabinet. You and I both know that there's something wrong with that, right? You know, and so I had to defend myself 
constantly until that was resolved and eventually was resolved. But, you know, that's the kind of thing, hatred, vindictiveness, you know, that's not of God. God has no part in that. And we should have no part in that. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We're trying to be an example yes. for good. Yes. Right? Good. right? Not just an example, yeah. but an example for good. Right. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I don't know where I'm going with this tonight. We're just kind of running around. Um, are we in 1 John chapter 3? Did we have them done with there? When we read 21, we're done with that. Let's go to 1 John 3, verse 14. Go backwards. Go backwards. We're going to spend a little... Like I said, we're going to look at John because it's so great. First John has so much to say about love. Yes, it does. Yeah. Awesome. First John three and verse fourteen. Everybody there? We know that we have passed from death unto life. What does that mean? That you. That we've been born again, right? Yeah. We passed from death, spiritual death, unto spiritual life, right? Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. So follow me now. Because we love the brethren. Alright? So you can't say you hate your brother or sister in the Lord, or anybody else for that matter, and say that you are born again. The two, you see how it says, we have passed from that. We've been delivered from that. we passed from that hate and that spite and that envy and that jealousy and all the works we passed that. We laid that down when you were baptized in water. All of that went under the water. When you came up, you became a new creature in Christ. All things were passed away. Behold, all things become new. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. At least that's what should have happened. Amen. It shouldn't just been a bath in the middle of the day. All right? Should have been something more to it than that. All right? Praise God. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whoa. That's pretty, pretty tough scripture, right? So if you don't love your brother, now I don't mean you have to like everybody, but you have to love everybody. I don't mean you have to make everybody your closest friends and pal around with them. And, you know, I don't mean that, but you have to love them. And we're going to talk about this in part two. You're going to have to esteem them better than yourself. Right. And we're going to get into that next time. That's another message. But we're going to, and that's where the really good message lies. I'm working up to that. And you're going to get some really eye opening things if you'll come back next time. You'll come back next time, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, good. Then I'll come back too. Let's go. All right. We'll all be back. Praise God. All right. Whosoever, verse 15, whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. See, I wasn't making that up, was I? No. Who says that? By the power of the Holy Spirit, it's God saying that, right? Amen. He says, if you hate your brother, I equate you just as somebody who went out and killed somebody and <laughs> murdered them. Wow. Yeah. Hate is pretty... High on his list of things not to do, right? Uh -huh. Wow. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in them. So if you hate your brother, are you born again? No. I mean, that scripture is so clear, is it not? Right, right. You can't confuse that, the meaning of that, can you? No. But see, a lot of people would argue with you about that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, well, you know, I can pray and God will forgive me because I hated my brother. Mm -hmm. Well, that may be true, but first you need to get saved. Yeah, I repent. <laughs> you know, seriously saved. Yeah. You know, when I was a boy in the Baptist church years ago, we used to have these revivals come in, you know, two-week revivals. Let me tell you, they knew how to do a revival back then. Oh, yeah. Man, we had revivals. We had them fire and brimstone preachers come in, let me dangle you over hell on a little thread, you know, and then cut it as you're hanging there. You know, we had some people that would put the fear of God in a lot of different ways to yeah. into your life. And every time 
the young people, we had a lot of young people in the church, and every time they'd give the invitation after one of those fiery messages, some of the young people would come forward and get saved. And we'd rejoice and have a great time. Praise God, and, you know. Yeah. Well, then six months later, another guy would come in. He'd preach another fiery message. He'd give another invitation. Those same young people would come again. And I thought, I thought they got saved six months ago. I was just a kid then myself. You know? How many times does it take for it to take? Right. You know? Right, right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> See, sometimes we can say we've gotten saved, uh -huh. and yet we really never had that life-changing yeah. experience. Amen. Right. There was a woman in a church I knew yeah. who had been in the church for 30 years. I told this before, but it'll bear retelling. Mm -hmm. And she was the wife of the music minister. Wonderful person. Just fine. I mean, if you looked at her, you just knew she was the essence of God. I mean, she was kind and giving and everything that she would want to be. But then one Sunday, when they gave the invitation, she walked the aisle and everybody's mouth fell open because it was a salvation invitation. Yeah. And she turned around to the group. Let me tell you, this takes guts now. Yeah. And said, I thought I was saved so many years ago. But God's been dealing with me and I, I know I've never really had a supernatural experience with God. Amen. And I want that. And she got saved that day. Ooh, hallelujah. I have to believe there is a lot of folks in a lot of churches today Amen. that are in that same boat. And too ashamed or too prideful to come and get the true salvation. Come in true repentance. Not come because two or three other of your friends are coming. But come because you're the unction of the Holy yes, Spirit is upon you. Hallelujah. Praise God. I, you know, Billy Graham once said that he, he suspected that 25 to 30 percent of any congregation in America was unsaved. That's a pretty strong statement. But if anybody knew about it, he should have some knowledge, right? He's preached in, to more people in more places than anybody I know of. Yeah. And, and he said, you know, they're religious. But they're not saved. Yeah. You know. Love will conquer all because love never fails. fails. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's see if I want to go anywhere else. Let's read on. Verse 16, I believe is where we're at. Hereby perceive we the love of God because He laid down His life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. What does love working in you allow you to do or urge you to do? To lay down your life for your brethren. Now what does that mean? We're not talking about death here. Although that would be the ultimate sacrifice. But we're talking about instead of preferring yourself, Preferring them. Amen. Instead of getting my need met because I want it, you're looking to see if you can help them get their need met. You see, love is selfless. And the world and the unbeliever, they're all about self. self. But God's love, you don't focus on self. Yeah. Love focuses out. See. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. But whoso hath this world's good, verse 17, and seeth his brother have a need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Now that's a passage most people don't want to read. Because if you read that, you're convicted if you're not doing it. And you don't, so you just don't read it. There are certain people that just read certain parts of the Bible, you recognize. The, the parts they like. 
Let me read the blessings of God. Oh, yes, I love the blessings of God. You know. But when you read something like this, it brings a conviction if you're not doing it, and it requires something of you if you read it. You cannot read it and stay the same. You're either going to follow through with Amen. it or you're going to deny it. That's right. When I was in different places, I never did have much money as a preacher because I was always pioneering churches. You just don't ever have any money. There was no retirement. There was no hospitalization. There was no nothing. In fact, there was hardly any salary. And sometimes we had to work you know, outside of the church to make ends meet. Just had to. Didn't have a choice. But there would come a time where I would see a need and if I only had a little bit of money, but if God prompted me, I could not see a need and turn away from it. Amen. I do not understand how Christians can see a need and then turn away from it. Yeah. How dwelleth the love of God in you? Yeah. If you can do that. If I see a need and I have the ability to meet it, I'm just going to meet it. I, you know, when I had money, the more money I had, the more I gave. When I was making 50000 a year a few years back, I gave money freely everywhere. And my mother would always chide me and say, you ought to be just floating in money. I said, well, not exactly, Mom. She says, but you're making this much a week. $1,200 a week you're making. $1,200 a week. That's a pretty decent salary anywhere you go, right? Uh -huh. What are you doing with all that money? She says, you're not dressing very well, so it can't be clothes, bless God. What are you doing? You're driving a beat-up car, so it can't be, you know, you're spending all your money on cars. I said, I'm giving it away. He says, but you might need that money someday. I said, well, God knows my needs. You know? I said, but I've got to do what my spirit prompts me to do. Because to deny the promptings of the spirit is to deny the love of God. And to deny the love of God is to deny God working in your life. Yeah, that's right. You see? So I just helped everybody. Now, you've you got to watch the con artist. You know, you've got to use a little... Have a little spiritual wisdom about yourself. That's right, brother. But when you know there's a genuine need, and, and you know, then you just do something. Amen. Sometimes I could do a lot. So now I can only do very little because I'm on such a limited financial budget. But even on this limited budget, I will do things when I'm prompted, like Boys Town up in uh, Nebraska, I think it is. I send them $10 every now and then. Now, I'm not bragging on me tonight. Please. Every time I say something about myself, people say, oh, there he goes again. You know, it's just I want to show you through example. It's not necessarily the amount that you give. It's with the heart that you give. That's it. it. That's right. God knows I don't have very much. $10 to me is like $100 to some people. Right. You see? Yes, it is. Vice versa, you know? Yeah. To them, $100 is nothing. To me, $100 is a whole lot right now. Right, right. You see, if I get a hundred dollars, I think, wow, I've been blessed. And I used to make twelve hundred of those dollars a week. Yeah. Paul says, I know how to abound and I know how to be a base. That's right. You know? And there's a there's a real wisdom key in that is learning how to be both. Amen. It's easy to know how to abound. Oh, it's always fun when you're abounding. <laughs> but when you're abasing, it, it's not so much. But you've got to learn how to trust God through the lean times as well as the rich times. Because God is the same God whether you're in the valley or you're on the mountain. That's right. Isn't he? Isn't he? Yes. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, goodness, we haven't gotten very far tonight, have we? Thank you, Jesus. I can't speak for anybody else. Verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Some people use the word love like I use the word hello. 
They'll say, love you. I thought, do you really? <laughs> yeah, maybe they're sincere. I can't judge their heart. I don't know. But they throw that word around like I throw hello around. Mm -hmm. Or how you doing? Mm -hmm. People used to say, now you come see me. And when I'd come see them, they'd say, what are you doing here? I said, well, you told me to come. See, they didn't mean it. That was just something they said. <laughs> well, now, if you're in the neighborhood, you just come on over and see us. Look, I just took people at their word. You know, I'm a man of my word. I thought, well, you know, they really want me to come see them. So when I knock on their door, they think, oh, yeah, um, Hi. <laughs> and I could tell, well, they really weren't expecting me at all and really don't look overjoyed to see me. <laughs> and so, you know, people say stuff and they really don't mean it. It's just... Brother Ron, read that in the Amplified behind you. Okay. Little children, let us not love merely in theory or in speech, but in deed and in truth, in practice and sincerity. Or I like to say an action. That's right. You see, it's action. Yeah. A deed is an action. A deed is something you do. It's an action verb. If you do a deed, you have to do something. People can say a lot of things with their mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, somebody or some of those folks are so tongue devils. They can just really it rolls off the mouth very easily. But that, there's no sincerity behind it. Right. It's just words. Yeah. And I'd rather have somebody tell me, show me they love me rather than tell me they love me. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm much more impressed by that. Yeah. You see. Because uh -huh. yeah. words are words are yeah. uh, easy to say. Right. Actions. Right. Another thing again, right? Right. Right. Praise the Lord. Praise We're gonna have to wrap it up here. And we didn't get very far tonight. I didn't even get off the first page. How is that possible? You know, praise God. That's good, brother. Good work. All right. Um, let's go one more and we'll finish tonight. Uh, Romans chapter 5. I'll skip one little verse I was going to look at. Go to Romans 5. And we'll finally try to finish on a real up, positive, powerful note. Romans 5. Verse 5. Talking about the importance of God's love. This is part 1. And we'll see how far God wants to go with this. There's a whole lot to teach. It really is. And hope maketh not ashamed... Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given unto us. So the love of God is done what? It's given by who? The Holy Spirit. He sheds it abroad in our heart. We don't have to go looking for love. We don't have to work it up. It's already in us. We just have to release it. It's not something that we have to find. It's already in us. The Holy Spirit has placed the power of the love of God, which love never fails. So that's the greatest power there is. Faith can fail. Faith can fail. I've had my faith fail more than once. Because it wasn't at the level it needed to be. You know, I had a problem. My faith was here. My problem was here. It just, you know, they didn't jive, you know. You know, I told this story before, but, you know, when I got out of Raymond and I was getting ready to buy a car, you know, well, the, went to the car dealers and they found out I was a graduate. Oh, well, you want a Cadillac. <laughs> I said, I'd love a Cadillac. But I don't think I have Cadillac faith. I'll just tell you right now. And uh, I said, I might have Buick faith. See, that's between a Cadillac and, and a Ford, you yeah. see. Buick's in between. I said, I think I might have Buick faith. Mm. But I'm pretty sure I got Ford faith. I, I think I got that one covered, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, see, you can't rise above where your faith is because there are limits right. 
But there's no limits in love. Amen. Love is limitless. Love never fails. The more you give, the more the Holy Spirit replenishes it in your heart. It's a constant flow. As you give, He restores. As you give, He revitalizes you. With His love, there's a never-ending flow of the love of God from the throne of God to your spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. Love is important, isn't it? Yes. Praise God. Well, we're going to stop here and we'll pick it up next time. Yeah. Hopefully some things I've said tonight through the Holy Spirit will Amen. help you Praise in God. some areas of your life. Father God, we thank you tonight for your word, for it is always good. Yes. And we have eaten of the good word tonight. The word that is supreme tonight, the love of God. There is not a greater word to be shared than the love of God. Help us to feed upon that which we've heard. We expect results from this and from the future teachings on it as we delve further into it and open up more of your love and what it means, the depths of your love. We cannot measure, the Word says we cannot measure the depth or height or length or breadth of the love of God. For there, it's limitless in its majesty and in its power. We thank you for sharing it with us tonight. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brother Ron, Amen. I feel like that word. Just wait just one second. Now, if, you, if you need to go, you can go. But I just in my heart, I, I feel like that there's a couple people that need prayer. If you need prayer tonight, let Brother Ron pray for you. We'll just sing a, a little chorus here. If you need to slip out, go ahead and slip out. And if you need prayer, come up. And uh, just uh, there's power in agreement. Amen. And uh, so if you need prayer for something, we're just going to open the open this front up here for you. And uh, I'm just going to say, anybody leave your love, you leave your uh, love stirred. If you need to have your love stirred tonight, stir it for you. Every day we say the thing, seeking to rise so but the master of the sea. My despairing cry from the waters lifted me. Now say, Am I lifted me? But if you have ordained to be God, we invite you and rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus.